Money, a mere piece of paper, yet holds a power that can either build empires or bring them to their knees. This seemingly insignificant tool, this universal language of value, has an uncanny ability to dictate our lives. It's more than just a medium of exchange, it's a psychological phenomenon, a catalyst that can ignite a spark of joy, a wave of anxiety, or a storm of conflict. It's intriguing, isn't it? How this simple man-made invention can control the world's pulse, how it can influence the very foundation of human behavior. It's not just about survival anymore, it's about status, power, and the elusive pursuit of happiness. Money, in its essence, is a mirror reflecting our dreams, our fears, our values, and our flaws. It's an invisible thread that weaves its way through every aspect of our lives, subtly shaping our decisions, our relationships, and our self-perception. So let's delve deeper into this financial labyrinth. Let's unravel the complex psychology of money and discover how this potent tool can either be a stairway to heaven or a pathway to destruction. Money indeed is a fascinating psychological instrument that shapes our decisions, behaviors, and lives. Money can't buy happiness, or so they say, but is it truly the case? Let's delve into this intriguing query. We've all heard the age-old adage, money can't buy happiness, a phrase often uttered with a dismissive wave of the hand. Yet in the world of psychology and economics, this matter isn't quite so black and white. Recent research suggests that money, contrary to popular belief, can indeed buy happiness, but only up to a certain point. According to a study published in Nature Human Behavior, an income of $75,000 a year seems to be the magic number. Beyond this, any additional income doesn't significantly improve emotional well-being. This is not to say that individuals earning more than $75,000 a year are not happier. They are, but the increase in happiness is not proportional to the increase in income. It's a classic case of diminishing returns. But let's take a step back. How exactly does money contribute to happiness? Money provides us with security and freedom, two fundamental elements of happiness. It allows us to meet our basic needs like food, shelter, and health care. It gives us the ability to enjoy life's pleasures and the freedom to pursue our passions. However, it's critical to note that money is just a tool in our pursuit of happiness. It's not the end goal, it's like a car that can take us to our destination, but it can't guarantee the journey will be enjoyable or that we'll like the destination once we get there. More money doesn't necessarily equate to more happiness. It's the choices we make with our money that truly matter. Spending on experiences rather than material possessions, giving to others and investing in our own personal growth. These are the ways in which money can contribute to lasting happiness. So can money buy happiness? The answer is a nuanced yes. Money can buy happiness, but only to an extent and only if we use it wisely. Ultimately, it's not money itself, but how we spend it that can contribute to our happiness. Money for many is not a source of joy, but a cause of fear and anxiety. This fear, known as crematophobia, is a psychological phenomenon that can have a profound impact on an individual's life. Chromatophobia isn't simply about being afraid to touch coins or crumpled bills. No, it's much more complex and multifaceted than that. It's a fear that can manifest in many forms. Some people may fear the responsibility that comes with having money, while others may dread the possibility of losing it. It can even stem from a deep-seated belief that money is evil or that wealth is inherently corrupting. This fear of money can lead to self-sabotage. Think about it. If you're afraid of something, your natural instinct is to avoid it, right? And that's exactly what happens. People with crematophobia may intentionally avoid opportunities to improve their financial situation. They might turn down promotions, avoid investing, or even spend money recklessly in an effort to get rid of it. This behavior, as one can imagine, can lead to financial instability. Interestingly, crematophobia often has its roots in one's upbringing. If you grew up in a household where money was a constant source of stress, or if you were taught that money is the root of all evil, it's not surprising that you might develop a fear of it. But here's the thing, money in and of itself is not good or evil. It's simply a tool, a tool that can be used to provide comfort, to help others, to create opportunities. It's how we choose to use this tool that really matters. So if you find yourself fearing money, it's important to recognize and confront this fear. Understand where it's coming from. 
Is it based on past experiences, misconceptions? Once you understand the root of your fear, you can start to address it. The fear of money, often rooted in misunderstanding, can be a major hurdle in achieving financial prosperity. But remember, it's a hurdle, not a wall. With understanding, patience, and the right mindset, it can be overcome. In a world where wealth often equates to success, it's easy to tie our self-worth to our financial status. Consider this, the psychological implications of equating self-worth with wealth are profound. When we tether our identity to our financial standing, we set ourselves on a precarious path, one where our self-esteem rises and falls with the ebb and flow of our monetary gains and losses. This mindset can be treacherous. It can lead us down a spiral of constant comparison where we measure our worth against others' financial status. We find ourselves in a perpetual race, always striving for more, never content with what we have. A bigger house, a faster car, a fatter bank account, these become the yardsticks by which we measure our value, our success, our very essence. But what's the danger in this? The danger lies in the never-ending pursuit of wealth. There's always someone richer, always something more to acquire. And so we find ourselves running on a hamster wheel, forever chasing an elusive sense of self-worth that's always just out of reach. Moreover, this mindset can rob us of our ability to appreciate the non-material aspects of life. The joy of a shared laugh, the warmth of a kind gesture, the beauty of a sunset, these priceless moments lose their luster when viewed through the lens of material wealth. So, what's the antidote? We must learn to separate our worth from our wealth. We must understand that our value as individuals extends far beyond our financial status. Our kindness, our empathy, our resilience, our ability to love and be loved. These are the qualities that define us. Our worth is not the measure of our wealth, but the depth of our character. It's the impact we have on the lives of others, the difference we make in the world. It's our actions, our words, our deeds. These are the true measures of our worth. Our worth is not defined by our bank accounts, but by our characters and our actions. Have you ever wondered why you buy things you don't need? The psychology of spending has some answers. Let's delve into the intricate world of our minds and wallets. When it comes to spending, it's not always about need. Sometimes it's about want. And that want, my friends, is cleverly manipulated by psychological triggers that we may not even be aware of. Let's take retail therapy, for instance. You've had a hard day at work, you're feeling down, and suddenly buying that pair of shoes you've had your eye on seems like the perfect pick-me-up. This is a classic example of emotional spending. We've been conditioned to associate spending with happiness and in this case, it's a temporary salve for our emotional distress. Then comes the keeping up with the Joneses effect. We've all felt it, haven't we? The need to match or surpass what our peers have, driven by a desire for social status. It's a powerful psychological trigger that can lead to unnecessary spending. And let's not forget about impulsive buying. That sudden powerful urge to buy something immediately, often triggered by a sale or discount, it's a clever tactic used by marketers to create a sense of urgency, making us believe we're getting a bargain when in fact we're spending money we hadn't planned to. But here's the silver lining. Understanding these triggers can help us make better financial decisions. By recognizing these patterns, we can start to question our spending habits. Do we really need that item or is it an emotional response? Are we buying to impress others or because it's a genuine necessity? Are we falling for marketing tactics? Being mindful of why we spend can help us resist these psychological triggers leading to more thoughtful spending. It's about taking control of our finances rather than being controlled by them. So the next time you're about to make a purchase, take a moment, reflect on why you're buying. Is it a want or a need? Are you being influenced by external factors? By understanding our own spending psychology, we can make smarter financial decisions and move closer to financial freedom. Understanding the psychology behind our spending habits can be the key to financial freedom. Money, a tool that can either make us or break us, depending on our understanding and handling of it. We've explored the intriguing power of money, revealing how it can shape our lives and define our happiness. We've delved into the fear of money, an emotion that can paralyze us or propel us to greater heights. 
We've examined the link between money and self-worth, reminding ourselves that our value is not determined by our wealth. And we've dissected the psychology of spending, understanding that our buying behaviors are more about our emotions than our needs. Throughout this journey, we've emphasized the crucial importance of understanding the psychological aspects of money. It's not just about earning and spending, but also about our attitudes, beliefs, and emotions related to money. It's about recognizing the power of money, but also its limitations. It's about using money as a tool to achieve our goals rather than letting it control us. Remember, when we understand the psychology of money, we can make better financial decisions, overcome our money fears, and cultivate a healthier relationship with money. We can use money to enhance our lives rather than letting it dictate our happiness and self-worth. Master the psychology of money and you master your financial destiny